द बिगेस्ट फियर इन द माइंड ऑफ अ डेंटल स्टूडेंट इज टीथ अरेंजमेंट और हो भी क्यों ना शुरुआत में एक दांत लगाने में हफ्तों गुजर जाते हैं नमस्कार ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम एच डी टी यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम डॉक्टर भूपेंद्र यादव एंड टूडे आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ टीथ अरेंजमेंट इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ टू अरेंज एंटीरियर टीथ एंड हाउ टू सेलेक्ट एंटीरियर टीथ फॉर अ कंप्लीट डेंचर पेशेंट हु हैज कम टू यू फॉर गेटिंग ए स्माइल बैक सो लेट स्टार्ट विद टीथ अरेंजमेंट Before starting with the teeth arrangement first you should know about the proper instruments and the armamentarium required you should have a wax knife wax spatula lacquer cover mounted cast with occlusal rims artificial teeth set glass slab blow torch and two bowls filled with cold water There are certain anatomical landmarks and references which are used to position the artificial teeth on your occlusal rim. First is the lip line. Lip line is the highest point of the upper lip when smiling. The cervical neck of the artificial teeth should lie at or above this line. If shorter teeth are selected, then the aesthetics are compromised. Then second is the palatal midline. It extends through the midline of the incisive papilla and the mid palatine raphe. It is used to check for the symmetry. If it is not symmetrical, then you have to adjust your occlusal rim. Then comes the canine reference. It is a line which is passing through the distal of the incisive papilla and is perpendicular to the palatal midline. It should intersect cusp tips of the canine. Another reference point is the incisive papilla. On an average the facial surface of the central incisors should be 8 to 10 mm anterior to this line. Now you are ready for doing the teeth arrangement. First you should heat your instrument properly over the flame for at least 10 to 20 seconds and melt the wax properly. Then you should start by placing the right side maxillary central incisor. When arranging the maxillary central incisors, you should keep in mind the following points. In frontal plane the incisor lead should touch the glass slab. and the long axis of the tooth is parallel to the midline in proximal view it should slope labially about 15 degrees and should match with the labial inclination of the occlusal rim or it should flush with the labial surface of the occlusal rim in occlusal view the incisal edge of the central incisor should follow the arch form in similar way you will arrange the maxillary left side central incisor keeping in mind the same principle as discussed before that is the incisor lead should touch the glass slab and the long axis of the central incisor is parallel to the midline after arranging maxillary central incisor we place the lateral incisors while arranging lateral incisor following points are taken into consideration in frontal view the long axis of lateral incisor is mesially inclined or in simple terms the crown portion is towards the midline and the root portion is distally inclined or away from the midline in similar way the contralateral or the opposite side lateral incisor is also arranged on the occlusal rim and the glass slab relation is checked the incisor edge of the lateral incisor is 1 mm above the glass slab whereas in the proximal view it is inclined labially about 20 degrees and the neck portion of the lateral incisor is slightly more depressed than that of the central incisor in occlusal view it follows the arch form of the occlusal rim after arranging lateral incisors we start with the maxillary canines canines when viewed in the frontal plane has a slight distal inclination from the perpendicular and the incisal tip touches the glass slab similarly the left side canine are also arranged The maxillary canine has two planes on the labial surface a mesial plane and a distal plane when viewed from the front only the mesial plane is visible following guidelines are followed for arranging the maxillary canines in frontal view the long axis of the canine has a slight distal inclination and the incisal tip is touching the glass slab similarly the neck of the canine is the most prominent part and supports the corner of the patient's mouth in occlusal view the tooth is rotated with the arch and represents the transition from anterior to the posterior 
uh, or are, are the turning point of the upper arch. To maintain the set teeth in position, the wax supporting the teeth should be heated and sealed both to the teeth and to the denture base. This is very important to maintain the position of the set maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth. After completing maxillary anterior teeth, we start with the mandibular anterior teeth. First, we arrange the mandibular central incisor. In frontal plane, the midline of the lower central incisor should coincide with the midline of the upper central incisor. The incisal edge must be above the level of the occlusal plane by 1 to 2 mm and proximally it should slope slavely and there should be proper horizontal and vertical overlap between upper and lower central incisors. Mandibular lateral incisor when viewed from the frontal plane is parallel to the long axis and is 2 mm above the occlusal plane. Proximally it slopes labially and follows the arch form. After arranging mandibular incisors, when we close the articulator, we should have a proper overjet and overbite. Overjet is the horizontal overlap between the maxillary and mandibular incisors, whereas the overbite is the vertical overlap between the anterior teeth. Both overjet and overbite are around 1 to 2 mm. Mandibular canine in frontal view is measly inclined from the crown portion and the neck is the most prominent part whereas the tip is at the same level as the incisors. The tip of the mandibular canine will be in the embrasure between the upper lateral incisors and upper canine and its distal slope should be opposed to the mesial slope of the upper canine. It is called as the normal canine position. After arranging the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth, we have to keep in mind following points. First, the incisal guide pin should be in middle of the incisal edges of the right and left maxillary central incisor and it should be almost touching the incisal edges. The overjet and overbite should be uniform between the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth. The teeth should be properly sealed with the denture base and all the extra wax should be removed from the occlusal rim. Incisal rod should be touching the incisal table. Now we are done with the demonstration part of the anterior teeth arrangement. Now we will talk about how these anterior teeth are selected for a complete danger patient. Anterior teeth plays an important role in the aesthetic of a patient. Hence, aesthetic is given more importance during the anterior teeth selection. The selected anterior teeth should function well allow the patient to speak normally, should be aesthetically pleasing and should not abuse the tissue over the residual ridge. Question arises when to select the anterior teeth. Anterior teeth should be selected at the second appointment. Selection should be done by the patient or the decision maker with the patient with dentist assistance. The dentist should only minimize the choices. Anterior teeth are selected on basis of size, form and shade of the teeth. The tooth size should be appropriate to the size of the face and the sex of the patient. The following methods can be used as a guide to select the size of the teeth. Pre-extraction records, anthropological measurements, anatomical landmarks, maxillomandibular relationship, lip length or lip line and inter edge distance. Pre-extraction records include diagnostic cast, photograph and radiograph for the preserved extracted teeth which can be used to determine the size of artificial teeth. Anthropological and anatomical entities can be used as a guide for anterior teeth selection such as width of central incisor is 1 16th of the bizygomatic width of the face or width of the upper six anterior is equal to the one third of the bizygomatic width. Incisive papilla and canine eminence can be used to measure the combined width of the upper six anterior, which is equal to the length of the line drawn on a cast from one canine eminence to the another, passing distal to the incisive papilla. Corners of the mouth are located intraorally, which are marked on the occlusal rims, and the distance is measured between them, which gives the width of the upper six anteriors. True bite indicator from Dent's Fly is an instrument which can also be used to measure the length and width of the artificial teeth to be selected according to the patient's face and form and other anatomical landmarks on the patient's face. Now coming to the nasal width. A line passing through midpoint between the eyebrows and lateral end of L of nose extended 
on to the occlusal rims give the combined width of the anterior teeth or the width of the nose is measured with a caliper and the measurement is transferred to the occlusal rim the mesial distal width of the nose is equal to the combined width of the fore incisor and the mesial half of the canine the length of the lip at rest and when the patient is smiling can be measured with the help of a papillometer or it can be marked on the occlusal rim and the anterior teeth can be selected accordingly now coming to the form of anterior teeth the form or outline of anterior teeth can be determined using following factors according to the shape of patient face or facial form or according to the patient profile till form can be classified into square tapering ovoid or combination of the above the teeth selected should be in harmony with the facial form according to the facial form the artificial teeth are also divided into three molds square where the outline of the teeth is in the form of a square tapering where the outline is in form of triangle and ovoid where the outline of the teeth are in oval shape the shape of the teeth should be inverse of the shape of the face that is if the face tapers downwards the teeth should taper upward profile the patient may have a convex straight or concave profile the label form of the artificial teeth should be similar to the facial profile of the patient how to select the color of anterior teeth color is the sensation resulting from the stimulation of retina of the eye by light of certain wavelength color and shade selection can be done in natural light or if not possible then artificial light of 5500 kelvin temperature for an edentulous patient factor like skin color hair color and eye color are considered the reference point of the face that can be used to select the color of the teeth are the side of the nose under the lips with only incisal edge exposed and under the lip with mouth open and only the cervical area covered if previous denture of the patients are available then color size and form of the new teeth selected can be matched with them and confirmed from the patient i know that some of you hate doing teeth arrangement but my dear students practice makes a man perfect i hope that my video had clear all your doubt regarding anterior teeth arrangement and you will be more confident in doing it next time stay tuned for my next presentation on posterior teeth arrangement thank you stay safe and have a nice day